when you start thinking about all the things that you don't need and you start writing those down, it's almost like this sense of freedom comes over you. Freedom from stuff that you don't want in your life. So these are just some of the items that I don't buy or own. Number one, because I would rather save that money than spend it on these things. And number two, I really like the feeling of owning less overall. I just like the feeling of having less stuff in my house. It feels really freeing and it feels really, really good. And saving money by not buying these things means more money in our bank account for building our emergency fund, for paying off debt if you have debt, or for paying for car repairs. I, personally, I have car repairs right now for our 2005 Toyota Tundra, and they're a lot these days. So um, yeah, I, and there's a lot of work to be done on that truck. And everyone's list is going to look a little bit different because we're all individuals. We have different things that we prioritize and certain things that we might value over others. And so we're all gonna be a little bit different with what we have on our list, but that is okay. We're all equals, we're all friends. We're just sharing lots of money-saving items ideas and we're gonna have our own personalities and quirks that come into that too and no one is better than anybody else because they buy this thing or don't buy that thing if i could i would add crickets to this list too hopefully you can't hear that right now but we do have a cricket in the house i can't get it it's like I don't know, it's like under the sink in the wall, I'm not sure, but I, I hear it all the time. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear it. Okay, on to the things that I don't buy or own. Number one, I don't upgrade to a new phone if my phone is still working. I, in fact, I had my iPhone success for the past eight years and finally had to upgrade this year because it was dying, it was blacking out, it was refusing to charge anymore, it was just, it was a goner. So this year I did finally upgrade to a new phone when my old success bit the dust a few months ago. Number two, I don't buy or collect multiple phone cases or phone accessories. I, I have my phone wearing the same outfit every day. Yep, it's it's wearing the same case. I'm not gonna go buy it different outfits to wear to accessorize with my outfit or anything. Nope, we're not doing that. Or accessorize with my nails. Nope, nope. It's gonna it's gonna live in the same outfit for years until it can't anymore. When I upgraded my phone a few months ago, I bought a Kadabi sheath phone case, and I've been really happy with it. It's super minimal. It's nice and sleek and slim. It's got a little bit of texture on there, very nice quality. And the buttons are nice and flexible. So I feel like it's a good quality and it's gonna last me years. Number three, Alexa. I know, I know it's super popular. A lot of people have it, but you know, it's the it's the little box or something that you talk to and the lady's voice answers questions for you if you have a question. <laughs> anyway, we don't have that. Um, yeah, it, I don't know, it just, it's never been like something that I wanted to have. So yeah, we don't have it, but we do have internet, which means we have Google and anytime I need an answer, I can get right on there and look it up on Google. Number four, another very popular tech item that a lot of people have, Apple watches. I don't have an Apple watch. Michael doesn't have an Apple watch. It's just not something that I ever felt that I needed. I'm not even sure exactly what they do. So maybe, maybe I need it. I don't know. Let me know. Is it something that I need? <laughs> I don't think so though. I've lived this long without it, you know, 42 years without one. So I, I think I'm good, but yeah, let me know. Do you have an Apple watch? Do you love it? What do you use it for? Number five, another very popular tech item, a Fitbit. A same thing as an Apple Watch to me. I'm not sure exactly what it does. I believe it tracks steps or your fitness, health, things like that. I'm not sure all what it does, but um, I've heard a lot of people really, really like theirs and it's very motivating for them, which I think is awesome. It's just not something that I ever felt that I needed uh, in my life. Number six, we don't have Netflix or any other streaming entertainment service. Number seven, we don't go to the movie theater. And I don't know if it's just the movies that are coming out and we're just not into them anymore, or maybe the quality of, I'm not sure what it is exactly, but I think it's a combination of the movies and we just kind of grew out of it and we don't want to pay the prices and we don't eat that food anyway. I think it's just an overall combination. But yeah, we really just enjoy staying in and eating our own food and, uh, you know, watching some YouTube. <laughs> I'm perfectly happy with that. Number eight, a gym membership. And I used to go to the gym. I used to, since the time I was like 16 years old, you know, on and off throughout my life, but mostly on, I was paying for a gym membership. And then I just, you know, when we moved here, we went for a couple of years and then I decided, nah, actually I don't want to pay for a gym membership anymore. So instead of paying for a gym membership, I have a nice yoga mat and I invested in a rebounder. So I have a, a nice quality rebounder 
founder. It's a Bellicon and I've been really, really happy with that. No more gym membership for me. I like working out at home. I like my rebounder. I've got some weights, you know, I've got some free weights and I've got some ankle weights. I've got my kettlebell. You know, there's just a few little things that you can have to add to just working out with your natural body weight and you, you can get a lot done just by that. Number nine, cookbooks. We don't buy cookbooks because we never make anything out of them. We have some on our bookshelf, but we never even like look through them. I never make any recipes out of them. Number 10, we don't pay for services like DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, any of those meal delivery services, Postmates, any of those things. We don't pay for any of those. Uh, and when it comes to having groceries delivered, I like to go, like I actually enjoy going to pick out my own produce and um, I, I don't want someone else pick, picking it out for me because I know what I'm looking for. I know the ripeness and I know, you know, how to pick it. So I like to do that stuff myself. I, I wouldn't want to pay for a service to like tr attempt to do that for me. I like the experience. Like if I'm going to go eat my favorite food at a restaurant, then I would just go to the restaurant and just go have that whole experience. And if I'm gonna eat at home, I would just rather eat my food at home. But we prefer to eat at home anyway, so we don't even hardly go out to restaurants, maybe like a few times a year, maybe like four or five times a year. Um, and that's only if there's like some sort of special occasion or if the gym show is in town or you know, if we have family visiting in town or something, then we'll go make an exception, go eat out. But usually we prefer to make our own food at home all the time. So we don't do takeout or anything like that. Number 11, we don't buy subscription boxes of any kind. I know there's all kinds available nowadays, everything from meal delivery or meal prep services to beauty boxes. And I've never really been into that whole idea of a subscription box just because I like to pick out my own stuff. I don't want like someone else picking out anything for me. I feel like I would end up with a lot of stuff that I would have to declutter too because there would be so much in the box that I wouldn't like. I just, I just already know that's how it would go. I'm so guilty of this next one. Number 12, decorative boxes to store things in. I used to be into buying boxes like from, I don't know, Ross or Home Goods, right? Pretty little boxes, wooden boxes or whatever. And I would just have them sitting on my shelf, like a couple of them, like matching set of them or something, have them on my shelf. And a lot of times they would just be empty or they would end up like with clutter in them or something. So yeah, I had to finally pull back from buying boxes to store things in because I was creating too many hiding places around my house for stuff to gather, for clutter to gather. Um, but you know, if you have like a pretty box that's maybe that was passed down to you or it's sentimental or it's your jewelry box or something, that's totally different. Number 13, picture frames. So I have a lot of pictures that are in our photo album, but we normally keep those put away and I don't really display a lot of photos like just around our house or anything. So I don't really have a need for picture frames and I never buy them. Number 14, knickknacks or dust collectors. Basically just any sort of ornamental item that is really just collecting dust but it doesn't have some sort of connection to you it doesn't have some sort of sentimental value or it's not something that's really special like it has to have something about it that is really special for me to want it in my house and have it on display uh, otherwise if it's just like I don't know like a bowl of balls you know like ornamental balls you ever see those like just like or like uh, i don't know like fake fruit on your dining table in a bowl or something like i don't understand i don't i don't understand that because don't you have to like really clean each of those things and of course it just depends on if you love it or not that kind of makes it either a knickknack dust collector or something that you really really enjoy having on display in your home for me i love having crystals from our mineral collection on display and then also even in my office i have crystals that come in for our website and we restock Stock, and so I have those out that I get to enjoy while I'm restocking them before they get put away back in the box or back in their flats for on the website. So I, I get to enjoy those too. So there's a lot of display items already in my house. So that's also probably another reason why I don't want um, other sort of knickknack items uh, cluttering up any surfaces or anything because I already have things that I really love that are special or there's something more rare or unique about them that I get to enjoy all the time. Number 15, I don't buy flat Flowers. You know, bouquets of cut flowers, you see them in the grocery stores in the florist department or at Trader Joe's, you know, they're, they're all over the place and I always see them and admire them. I think they're really pretty, but I don't spend money on them. I enjoy flowers when I see them in nature or in the store, but I leave them in the store. I don't buy them and take them home with me because I know that they're just going to die and I feel like I'm just watching money literally 
wilt as the flowers are dying and it doesn't give me a good feeling so it makes me feel like I, I blew money on something that was just so temporary and I could have saved that money for something else that would last me a lot longer or invested it in another way and so I just don't get the same sort of joy that a lot of other people do by buying bouquets of cut flowers and having them displayed in their home. Number 16 seasonal decor or holiday decorations of any kind I skip all of that if I am going to buy decor I'd rather Rather save my money and put it into a nice piece that I get to enjoy all the time you know a nice piece of furniture a nice coffee table a nice chair or you know a nice plant stand something like that that I get to see all the time and it's not just a temporary thing that sits out for uh, display purposes and then I have to pack it away for the rest of the year number 17 DIY and craft supplies I'm so guilty of this one I used to do DIY projects all the time on YouTube and as, as fun as it was in the moment making the video I really enjoyed making those videos I realized later on how wasteful I had actually been with my money and not just the money but it was all the waste of the leftover supplies after every single project that I did so that's why I quit doing a lot of DIY projects I'm totally not against doing a DIY project that's like an essential like you're doing a home renovation or something like that kind of DIY but the stuff that I was doing was you know a fun decor it wasn't like anything that was an essential for anyone or uh, really adding a lot of value to anyone's life you know it was just fun things to make also when I quit doing the DIYs I was able to eliminate going to fabric stores so I don't buy fabric or sewing supplies now if if you make your clothes or make your children's clothes or something that's totally different you know you might be able to save money that way but for me it was just for you know making throws and pillows and things that I didn't actually need you know I was making non-essentials with that fabric and the fabric was expensive it was it was too much so I just decided I don't want to pay for that stuff anymore so I don't buy fabric or sewing supplies anymore also number 19 paint and painting supplies I quit buying a lot of paint you know I used to buy spray paints and different shades and everything to do the different projects and makeovers on furniture so since I quit doing that I don't have to buy all of that paint anymore which saves me a bunch of money so not doing all of those painting projects allowed me to not have all of these stored cans of paint like half used paint cans and half used bottles of spray paint so now I don't have all of the stuff that's associated with doing all of these painting projects number 20 I don't buy greeting cards because well number one have you seen the prices of these things they are very expensive for a one-time card and also it's just gonna get thrown in the trash shortly after the person receives it instead of giving that money to the greeting card company I'd rather put that money into something the person actually wants or a gift card or something else where they get it and you know then I can always make a card at home on my computer and printer or write a letter or something you know something else instead instead of giving the money away I mean we know greeting cards might be saved for a little while but eventually they just end up in the trash number 21 I don't buy magazines or magazine subscriptions but I used to when I was younger so uh, you know I just changed that habit I used to be into fitness magazines but now you look at them and it's like all ads and I don't want to pay for ads that's ridiculous so I just skip all of the magazines and yes there might be some magazines that might be worth it they might be like a specialty magazine like Michael is into fine home building so occasionally he will get a magazine like that like very rarely like maybe like once or twice a year Year. but for me I quit buying magazine subscriptions and magazines in the stores altogether number 22 I don't buy multivitamins or supplements the only supplement that I do take is b12 and that's it so I used to take a lot of supplements I, I was always trying different ones and trying to help heal my body it didn't work <laughs> fast forward it was the food it was the food that I was eating back then was messing me up so I was kind of doing things backwards I was taking supplements to try to fix problems that I was still causing myself because I was still eating the same diet until I I finally changed my diet got that foundation right and then my body was able to heal and so now I don't require spending money on all these supplements or protein powders or all this other stuff because I'm just getting everything I need through my food but if you are getting your foundation right and you still have some sort of deficiency going on you might have to take a supplement you know if your doctor says you need a little of this or a little of that right that totally makes sense but we, we want to get the foundation right which is our actual nutrition through food grown from the earth if you're having some health problems look you know check your diet out see if there's things you can swap out for healthier items like for me eating high raw fruits and vegetables is what healed my body just eating the right things and not eating the wrong things 
really saves us a ton of money because then we're not having to put it into supplements, which are very expensive, and also pharmaceuticals later on down the road. And that leads us to number 23, processed prepackaged food or junk food. Uh, I am definitely guilty of this. Okay, in my past, and especially when I was growing up, I was a junk food connoisseur. I ate it all. I ate all the chips, all the Doritos, all the Fritos, all the bean dip, all the nacho cheese, okay? Pizzas, fried chicken, soda. Oh my gosh, soda was a really hard one to get off of. I was stuffing myself with cookies and Little Debbie Swiss rolls and all kinds of other baked goods and cheesecake. You wonder what happened to my health. That's, <laughs> that, that's what happened. So it wrecked my body from the inside out for a long time. Uh, so anyway, anyway, so I'm coming from a place of, you know, having been a former junk foodie to now I eat only whole foods, you know, plant-based, high raw. Like I'm literally at the opposite end of where I came from, okay? But I just wanted to share that with you because I, I know how hard it is to get off of those kind of processed foods. It's not our fault that we get addicted to those foods. Food manufacturers make those foods to be addictive. I would eat like a whole sleeve of cookies or half a box of Little Debbie Swiss rolls, okay? Like I was, I could not just eat a few. That was ridiculous, that was preposterous. I had to eat like half a bag of Doritos, okay? So anyway, I just want you to know like my past and where I'm coming from, so I totally get it. I understand the addiction and I was extremely addicted to soda for many years. It took me a long time to get off soda. That was a really, really hard one. So anytime that I'm talking about processed foods and getting off of them, that's, that's why, because I have firsthand experience um, breaking those habits and uh, escaping the addiction and um, you know, regaining health was the ultimate goal, right? And these processed junk foods, because they are empty calories and we're paying for nothing in return for our body, except a, a very short-lived good time, you know, as you're chewing the food and then it's gone and then you feel not so great afterwards, right? There, there's nothing that we're actually getting back. We don't get any value. Cost is what you pay, value is what you get. When we buy those processed foods, we don't get any value back from it. It just is robbing us, robbing us of our money and our health. All of these highly processed pre packaged foods are very expensive, but it's not only the cost we pay when we buy it, it's the cost we pay after we eat it with our health. Number 24, beverages. I don't spend money on beverages at home. I drink water or I make a smoothie. And then if we're ever out at a restaurant for a special occasion, I order my meal and I just get water. Number 25, this is my own personal one because Michael does do this, but I don't buy condiments. I don't eat condiments normally because they either contain sugar, oil, high sodium, or vinegar, which are all things that I don't I don't like to eat. <laughs> so I try to avoid all those things. So if I'm wanting to like spice up something, I use spices. Or if I want to have, you know, some fat creaminess on my salad, I have avocado or, you know, whatever it is, there's always a whole food alternative. And so that's what I go for. It's so easy to make your own flavorful sauces and dips at home. I mean, think about guacamole, salsa. You can make your own peanut sauce out of no peanuts. I don't use peanuts in my peanut sauce. I know weird. I'm a weirdo. What can I say? I, I will make like this dipping sauce that I call peanut sauce, but really it's dates, like medjool dates, ginger, and apricots when they're in season. And I use that as a dipping sauce. It's so good on uh, my, my sushi. I make a, a vegan sushi roll. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing. <laughs> but there's so many different ways that you can make up your own dips and sauces. Number 26, I don't spend money on fancy coffees, lattes, mochas. I actually quit caffeine altogether about a year and a half ago. I used to drink coffee almost every day, but I decided one day that I wanted to quit caffeine and see what would happen. And you know what? I got more energy after I quit caffeine. <laughs> so I feel so much better too. I sleep, that was the, that was the other thing. I sleep so much better. And I don't have that restless leg syndrome anymore. Oh, it, it was such a positive change and I will not go back ever again. I'm totally done with caffeine. Number 27, alcohol. I don't spend money on alcohol. I don't drink. I used to on rare occasions, but I was never really a, a drinker. I was never like really into alcohol. I never liked the taste of it anyway. I was never into wine or any of that stuff. So it saved me a lot of money over the years by not drinking. The last time I had a drink of alcohol was in 2018 and I quit that. Right after that, I decided actually 
actually, I don't want any like at all ever again. So I, d I don't drink any alcohol at all. I just don't have a, a desire to, and I need those brain cells. I can't be having them like all buzzed up there. I, I need to be able to think straight, you know? So no alcohol for me. Number 28, I try not to own any non-essential furniture. So I, I definitely don't buy non-essential furniture. Anything that comes into my house has a specific use. Like it has to have a specific function that is going to start serving right away. I don't want to just store furniture in my house. Furniture that isn't serving a purpose can actually be the clutter. So we want to watch out for any furniture pieces that are sort of just taking up space, not really a functional piece. And maybe it's also a storage space for more clutter to hide in. Number 29, heavy, awkward, or difficult to move furniture. Nope, <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Michael and I both agreed. We like to have lightweight pieces that are very easy for one person to move, or we might have a couple things like our bed or something where it takes two of us. But in general, we like to have lightweight, easy to move furniture that isn't like heavy and awkward. We don't own a TV and we haven't had a TV for the past 20 years and I don't miss it a bit. In fact, I love not having a TV and not having a TV saves me more money. So I don't have to pay for a cable bill or channel subscriptions or any of the other expenses that might come with owning a TV. Not having a TV also means I don't have to have TV furniture, like no TV stand or, you know, big entertainment center or any of the things that you would store in an entertainment center, like like gaming consoles or I don't know, I don't know all the things, but you know, all the things that would be in an entertainment center. Number 32, I'm so guilty of this one, throw pillows. Like half of our bed was covered with throw pillows and every night I would have to take them all off and we'd get into bed. And then the next morning I'd make the bed and put them all back on there. And I loved them though at the time. Uh, but I finally kind of like got over that phase of over collecting throw pillows. So I have a rule for myself. I have one set of throw pillows I'm allowed to have and I'm saving them for when I find the right sofa. And just like throw pillows, I quit buying throws, like throw blankets, you know, draping them on chairs and stuff. I don't know, back in the day, I thought that looked nice but then I realized looking back, it just made my space look messier. So I don't use any throws anymore. I don't have them on our bed. I don't use them on chairs. I don't drape them on anything anymore. Number 34, I don't buy multiple sheet sets. We just have one sheet set for our bed. And if I'm doing laundry, like if I'm washing the sheets that day, I just do it in the morning and then they're back on by the afternoon time. And so we just have one set that we use all the time. Number 35 is a very popular home decor item that you'll find in most households candles. I stopped buying candles because number one, I didn't like burning my money. I, I didn't like spending my money on a candle and then literally burning that money. It just made me feel a little uncomfortable. Also with candles, there's a lot of artificial fragrances and chemicals that I didn't want to be burning in the house and breathing them in. We don't buy any household products that have artificial fragrances. So any type of air fresheners, sprays, plugins, um, like Febreze sprays, you know, furniture sprays, carpet uh, fresheners. I know for me, any of these artificially scented household products, if I'm around them, instantly it triggers allergies, which I normally don't have. I don't, I don't have any symptoms of allergies ever unless I'm around something that has a strong artificial scent. And then my nose will start just draining and I'll be sneezing. My eyes will start to water. I will just be like a mess for hours after breathing something in just one whiff of it. So um, yeah, if you have any allergy problems in your house, check out if you have any artificially scented products. And laundry detergent is a big one for artificial fragrances. And it also doesn't smell great when you're wearing the clothes afterwards, like after washing them and a lot of these fragranced uh, laundry soaps. We use free and clear laundry soap from Costco. And so there's not real, there's no like leftover scent to it really. At least I don't think so. Yeah, it just, nope, it doesn't really smell like anything at all. Dryer sheets, dryer balls, uh, fabric softeners, stain removers. We don't buy any of those things. We have laundry detergent, baking soda, and borax. That's all that we use in our laundry room. And we also save on our electric bill by not using our dryer for most of our laundry. Like for our clothes, we just hang dry our clothes, both Michael and I, on our laundry rack in the laundry room. But we do use the dryer for like towels and sheets, and that's pretty much it. Number 39, I don't wanna spend a lot of money on cleaning products for every surface, right? They have a ton of cleaning products and they can be very expensive. 
expensive. I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend my money on cleaning products. I want to minimize that as much as possible, but I still want to get the job done, right? So I have the basics like white vinegar, baking soda, borax. I have Barkeeper's Friend, which is a cleanser I really like. They also have that in the, the liquid form too. Um, and I have like a pumice stone for cleaning the toilet. Oh, and Michael has like a floor cleaner. He's always using for, you know, for mopping the floors. He's always testing out different ones. That's pretty much it. We like the basics that can get a wide variety of surfaces done uh, for very little cost. Number 40, glassware. There is so much glassware out there and a lot of it doesn't hold very much value. It seems to go down in value as soon as you buy it. And so I try to avoid buying any glassware, uh, like vases, decorative bowls, but sometimes we need glassware. There's things that we're doing with it, right? Like I am propagating plants in glassware, but I don't buy it. I try to just upcycle it from products that I already have, like palm heart jars from Costco. They're perfect for propagating my plants. So normally I will just save those since we already buy the product. I just save them, you know, clean off the label and it's a perfect little jar or vase to be able to use for propagating my plants. And also since I don't buy cut flowers, I don't have a need to have a lot of vases around the house anyway. But with that said, I do believe that we have too many food prep containers. Number 41, coffee mugs. I realized I didn't need to be collecting multiple coffee mugs when I only use one at a time. <laughs> so I just whittled down my collection to one and that's all I have now. But I realized I'm not even using that one actually. So I need to go do a kitchen declutter I think because there's some other items in our cupboards I know that we don't use anymore too so I, I'll have to do that in another video but Michael has his coffee mugs and little espresso cups because he drinks hot beverages he loves coffees and stuff like that so he has a few but I just realized it's not something that I need anymore so I just quit buying them altogether. Number 42 multiple thermoses flasks or hot cold beverage tumblers I used to collect too many of those because they come in different sizes. Some have straws, there's tumblers. They come in different limited edition colors, you know, Yeti, Hydro Flask, whatever your brand is. And I realized, ooh, I, I kinda collected too many of those. So I actually went through my collection a few years ago and whittled down my collection and sold off some of them. Uh, and then I just have a few left, but I use every single one of them, but they are an awesome product. I use them all the time. I just don't buy any more more because the ones I have are probably going to last me like for the next decade at least. They work really well and I just can't see myself needing to buy any more anytime soon. Number 43, multiple sets of dishes or china sets, collector's plates, just too many dishes. I, I don't buy dishes if I can avoid it. Like I try to have as few as possible actually. I have just enough for Michael and I and if we have company over and that's it. Number 44, designer handbags and I almost get a little bit of a, a cringe when I think about it because I bought a designer handbag once so I, I'm guilty of this one. In my past I bought one, it was a Dooney and Burke and I kicked myself ever like ever since I had bought that thing until I finally sold it. <laughs> Luckily I was able to sell it and I'm a handbag person. I really like a good looking handbag and a well-made high quality handbag. Uh, but I won't pay designer label prices. No, no way. I have one handbag right now. It's handmade, hand woven in Thailand. I bought it 10 years ago for $60 and I'm so happy with that bag. I use it every day. Number 45, designer label clothing. Nope, no interest. I feel just the same way about designer clothing as I do designer handbags. Number one, I'm not paying for somebody's name. I'm not gonna wear somebody's name. And I, I, I'm just like, it does nothing for me. Like it doesn't excite me in any kind of way. I feel nothing when I see it, designer labels, like it does nothing for me. Also like high maintenance clothing. So I totally get the nicer clothing if you work in an office setting and you have to wear like suits or, you know, nice uh, shirts or something and you have to have them done a certain way, totally get that. But for me in my wardrobe, I have comfy casual clothes. I don't have to pay for dry cleaning or anything. So I, I wouldn't do it by choice. <laughs> I wouldn't want to have anything that I would have to go pay for to take it out and dry clean. That would be a pain. Number 46, uncomfortable footwear. So any uncomfortable shoes like high heels, not happening. I mean, I have some wedges. Yes, wedges are nice, you know, but high heels, stilettos, like things that are painful or don't make sense to me, like things that feel like you're just walking on a piece of cardboard on the concrete, no thanks. 
I'm gonna pass on that. And with my wardrobe especially, since I like to own less items overall, I try to make everything really easy to mix and match. So with my footwear especially, I like to go with neutrals. So I don't buy like bright colors or anything flashy when it comes to footwear. Number 47, costume jewelry. I am so guilty of this one when I think of my younger years early 2000s shopping at Claire's and Forever 21's, buying my big hoop earrings, buying my little necklaces, and they always made my skin itch and my ears itch because the metal was not good quality. You know, it was just like, who knows what sort of mix of stuff was in that alloy. I mean, definitely nickel, because nickel is a lot of times what makes you itch, you know, if you have metal allergies at all. But now that, now that I'm looking back, you know, later in my life, I realize how much money I was wasting because there was no value in that stuff. As soon as you walk out the store with that new piece of costume jewelry, it's basically valueless. It, there's, there's no value <laughs> left in it. Once I got into working in the jewelry trade, you know, gyms, jewelry, meteorites, minerals, all of that stuff, that's my, my job. So once I got into that world, I realized, oh, I would much rather have not spent any money on the costume jewelry, I would have saved that money and invested in one nice stone at a time, one high quality stone, and had it set into you know a ring or pendant or whatever if I wanted to turn it into jewelry. And that would be so much more valuable today than all of that costume jewelry put together. Like the costume jewelry doesn't hold any inherent value, but gemstones always hold their value or they go up in value as they become more rare over time. This probably goes without saying, but I also don't buy designer jewelry, like designer jewelry labels. I would rather once again have uh, my money invested into the stones themselves, not somebody's name. Number 48, yard ornaments. Yard ornaments are kind of like outdoor knickknacks, you know? You could have figurines, you could have metal objects, uh, metal animals, metal plants, for goodness sakes. They have metal plants that you could buy and display in your yard. But anything that would fall into the yard knickknack or yard ornament category, I don't buy any of that. On our back patio, I have our lounge chairs, which I use all the time, and then also plants. I've got some plants, not a lot of plants, so I downsized my plant collection quite a bit outside. And I wanna hear from you guys too. So in the comments below, if you can take a moment to let me know what ways you like to save money, like what sort of things do you not buy in order to save money or be more frugal? So let me know in the comments below and I can always pull your guys' comments together and create another video with ways that you save money. It would be interesting to share all of your ideas together and we can all learn from each other. Let me know in the comments below the things that you you don't buy that helps save you money. I, I want to know. I want to hear from you guys. All right. I love you. Take care and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.